Let's take a look at how Raptor pilots are testing a new helmet and why this could be a game changer. In today's integrated multi-domain battlefield, information reigns supreme. A pilot's situational awareness and likelihood of success are significantly enhanced by their ability to access real-time data. Indeed, since the advent of aerial warfare, aircraft designers and strategists have been striving to provide pilots with the maximum amount of information possible. In the past, analog or steam gauges were employed for this purpose, but the introduction of the heads-up display or HUD revolutionized the approach. By projecting critical data directly in front of the pilot's line of sight, the HUD minimized the time spent diverting attention away from the external environment to check the gauges. However, as good as the HUD was and is, it required the pilot to be looking straight ahead, something that was not always possible while maneuvering an aircraft in combat. The next evolution in information display technology was the introduction of the Helmet Mounted Display or HMD. The HMD integrates the information normally displayed on a HUD directly into the pilot's helmet, which then allows the pilot to view critical flight and mission data without having to divert their gaze to a separate screen or instrument panel. By seeing key information at all times, the pilot's situational awareness is enhanced and allows them to more quickly react to changes in the environment. Additionally, HMD also greatly reduces workload by lowering the amount of time and effort required to search for and interpret data. Another advantage of HMD is in weapons deployment. Case in point, the Joint Mounted Helmet Queuing System, or JHMCS, allows pilots to target and fire the aim right next sidewinder up to 80 degrees off the aircraft's nose meaning a missile lock can be obtained on an enemy aircraft flying next to the fighter. The JHMCS mounts directly onto the HGU-65 series of helmets, a versatile helmet that has been in service for decades. These helmets are used by virtually all Navy and Air Force aircrew except for the F-35. More on that later. Operating in high-G environments puts extreme stress on the body, which is why fighter pilots need to maintain excellent physical fitness throughout their careers. Still, because of the G-forces a fighter pilot endures over time, many fighter pilots develop long-term neck and back issues. One of the best ways to reduce these potential issues is to lower the weight of the helmet. In fact, a lightweight helmet that is more comfortable, stable, and balanced can go a long way in reducing the potential long-term effects of operating in high-G environments. To this end, testing has already begun in a program known as the Next Generation Fixed Wing Helmets, or NGFWH. The new helmet being tested is being developed by the California-based Lift Airborne Technologies. Known as the AV 2.2 NGFWH helmet, F-22 Raptor pilots from the 301st Fighter Squadron out of Eglin Air Force Base have begun testing the helmet. The new helmet allows for unparalleled mobility, comfort, and visibility in the cockpit. One pilot who flew his F-22 with the new helmet stated that the increased visibility and mobility of the helmet was a massive improvement compared to what he's used to flying with. The new helmets are made of carbon fiber, which results in a 42% lighter weight. The helmet also features vents in the back that increase airflow and has adjustable knobs to customize the fit of the helmet. Another new feature can be found in the helmet's visor, which is made of a polycarbonate single pivot dual visor, which allows the pilot to raise or lower the visor with just one hand. The helmet also contains a hands-free cockpit illumination system, which allows the pilot to toggle the side-mounted lights simply by clenching their jaw. One of the more often overlooked aspects of helmet design are the numerous accessories that can be mounted to modern helmets. Items such as night vision goggles or NVGs used to be manually added and adjusted, which would take aircrew hours to prepare. In the case of NVGs, an AFE airman would use power tools to drill the brackets into the helmet. The new helmets have attachment points and mounting systems built in. This saves aircrew significant amounts of time in preparing helmets for flight operations. Following each test flight, the F-22 pilots provide feedback on any questions or concerns about the helmet that may have arisen throughout the flight. The engineers from the test squadrons then take that feedback and provide it to the manufacturer, so the helmet can be further modified as needed. The next aircraft type scheduled to test these helmets will be the HC-130J and the B-1B Lancer. The choice of the F-22 Raptor to initially test these new helmets is an interesting one. Despite being arguably the best 5th generation fighter, the F-22 does not make use of a helmet-mounted display system. 
relying instead on the traditional heads-up display. The reason that F-22 pilots do not make use of an HMD is actually due to space constraints. When the Raptor was being developed, the canopy was shaped to optimize radar cross-section, or RCS, as much as possible. This was done while also meeting the minimum visibility and clearance requirements that were known at the time that the aircraft was being designed. Unfortunately, while the Raptor was being designed, the U.S. had not deployed an HMD system yet. So designing a canopy that could accommodate an HMD system was not part of the requirements during the Raptor's development. We still don't know if the newer helmets will allow for some kind of HMD connection while still fitting within the Raptor's canopy constraints. If and when that happens, I'll make a follow-up video. What about the F-35? Stealth technology had advanced significantly from when the Raptor was designed, and the Lightning's pilots make use of a helmet-mounted display system, or HMDS. The Lightning's HMDS is considered to be the most advanced helmet system in the world, and along with standard helmet display system, the HMDS fully utilizes the advanced avionics and sensor fusion built into the F-35. This system provides the pilot with video imagery in day or night conditions. This is done by making use of multiple cameras mounted around the aircraft and allows the pilot to actually see through the aircraft. This camera system on the Lightning is part of DAS, or Distributed Aperture System, and provides 360-degree spherical awareness to Lightning pilots. As a result, the Lightning is the first tactical fighter jet in 50 years to fly without a HUD. Along with the F-35's advanced helmet system, the Lightning's radar is also being upgraded. Designated the AN-APG-85, this new radar is based on a gallium nitride or GAN composition. GAN-based radars are smaller, more powerful, and have a wider range of operating frequencies. As a result, the new APG-85 radar should increase the F-35's radar range and resolution dramatically. Some estimates show that the APG-85 will be able to process 10,000 more simultaneous data points than the existing APG-81. This new material composition should also go a long way in supporting dynamic electronic warfare tactics. Additionally, the new radar should allow the F-35 to act as a mini AWACS or airborne director, making the Lightning an even better drone controller and information node in the ever-increasingly complex battle space. And while the APG-85 radar will provide enhanced detection ranges and resolution, it will also likely boost its offensive capabilities in the form of Electronic Counter Countermeasures, or ECCM. Today, many combat aircraft, ships, and vehicles incorporate some form of Electronic Countermeasures, or ECM, to jam or spoof radars. And while the F-35's current APG-81 is itself capable of ECCM, remember those extra operating frequencies mentioned from the GAN composition? Well, those previously unavailable frequencies and the advanced computational power of the APG-85 should allow it to burn through enemy jamming using ECCM, thereby allowing the F-35 to track and lock targets at a much higher rate. This is significant given the rise of near-peer fifth-generation fighters like the Chengdu J-20, which boast some stealth characteristics and electronic countermeasures of their own. In theory, the APG-85 should be able to neutralize some, if not all, of these advantages. The F-35's avionics and helmet system were designed to work together from the ground up, and is one of the many reasons that the Lightning keeps winning fighter procurement competitions while becoming the most produced fifth generation stealth fighter in the world. What do you think? Is the new helmet a game changer? Will the F-22 ever have an HMD? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy learning about the latest upgrades to the best fighters in the world, then check out this video on the Block 70 F-16, aka Viper. Now you know!